<laughs> All right, Bull Bull. Yeah, he's a good boy. What's happening, everybody? So I know a lot of you guys, like me, you install your own suspension. And so this is gonna be kind of like a little tech tip video on how to do your own home alignment. And this is a car here that I used to own. I sold this car and I just did a couple things to it for the guy you know, before he takes it. And one of those things is we got QA1 upper control arms. We've got, uh, you know, aftermarket shocks. We've got uh, the adjustable strut rods. You know, I've reinforced the lower control arms, got new bushings on the lowers. And so getting ready to drop it on the ground to do an alignment. And the Mopars are kind of tricky. A lot of guys take them to an alignment shop and they get have an alignment done on them. Um, I'm not really a fan of taking my cars to an alignment shop. Not that there's anything wrong with them, but I'm, I'm just really picky. You know, I want the suspension a certain way. And a lot of guys just go by the book. I know sometimes you can tell them what you want, but, uh, Eh, I don't I just I just like doing my own thing and so I'm going to show you guys how to do your own alignment at home and some of the tools you might need and to show some of those tools we got them right here we have simple toe plates now you can buy these they're they're pretty cheap they're like 40 bucks it comes with the ta little tape measure so you have even measurement on both sides and all you do with this if I can get it up is you just put it up against the tire you know, I usually just put my knee in the middle or my foot, whatever, and then you run tapes across both sides. And that tells you the distance between, the, or that tells you the track width between the front of the tire and the back of the tire, and that gives you your toe. Now, this is one of my favorites right here. It's magnetic, so I gotta pick it up. There we go. This is a caster camber gauge. This is what I always used on my race car. This is not the digital one. This is a bubble gauge, which I like these better because it doesn't require batteries. I never have to look for batteries. I never have to buy batteries. It's, and plus, it's already zeroed out. You know, I don't have to zero anything. And it comes, you can set your caster and your camber with this gauge right here. But this is a little expensive. You know, this guy right here is like 150 bucks. Um, there's a cheaper alternative though. There is an eBay alternative, which, you know, this guy right here. Now, it looks like the same size, but, and I thought it was in the pictures until, you know, it shows up. <laughs> it's much smaller, <laughs> but it will still do the job. And this is a digital one here. So, see, there we go, digital. And it has the bubble on it, which you need to set your caster. So this guy here will do the job. You know, your basic tools. I've got my string, which I'll show you how to use. I use this for aligning the, uh, uh, helping set the steering wheel. And then grease, the only reason I have this here is, so these are just two plates and there's grease in between. Well, it's hard to separate them now because there's grease in between them. But these are basically my turn plates and it allows the suspension to settle because you can't just set the suspension. So the car's up in the air right now. It's on jack stands. Or oh, no, it's on a jack. If I just set it down, the car is not going to go to its ride height. Even if you press down on the car, it's not going to go to its correct ride height or its settled ride height, I should say. These allow the suspension to settle. You just wiggle the steering wheel a little bit and the, car, the footprint of the tire will push the plate around to allow the suspension to settle where it needs to be. There's a couple things though. You don't want to, so you just got your new suspension on, you got your new bushings and your lower control arms. Now, this has QA1 uppers on it, so I don't have to do this for the uppers. But for the lowers, see we got our, there's the bolt right there to tighten the, uh, the pin that has the bushing in it. Before you set it on the ground, leave this a tad loose. Tighten it up all the way, but then crack it loose, you know, just, and just enough to where, you know, the washer can just barely spin because if you set the car all the way down with that bolt tight, your brand new bushing that you just put in there is going to be stressed and twisted to the point where it's just gonna rip apart. You know, it, it might not happen right away, but it will, it, it, it will make it to where it fails really fast. I know this, I've done that. I've corrected that. So I'm just, you know, letting you give me my two cents on on what to do there if you had stock upper control arms it's kind of the same thing you don't want to fully tighten your hardware 
until the car is aligned and it's on the ground at its settled ride height and then you cinch down your bolts. That way your upper and lower bushings can travel in their normal range of movement without just ripping them apart. All right, so we filled you in right there. Now, this has adjustable strut rods right here. Now, if it's a stock car, not stock car, but if, it's, you know, if it, it has a stock part here with stock strut rod, there's no adjustability to it. It's just a rod with bushings in here. Now, when you have an adjustable one, you wanna make sure you don't preload your bushing. So you kinda of wanna neutral it. So I can turn it one way, it gets kinda of stiff, and I can turn it the other way, it gets kinda of stiff. And so you just wanna kinda of put it in the middle there, so that way the bushing is not bound up. Now, this is a fine adjustment for caster. That's what we're gonna do with this. We're gonna set our main caster adjustment on the, uh, on the uh, uh, cam bolts on the upper control arm. Okay. All right, Derek, go ahead and drop it down. Now we're gonna show, hold, uh, yeah, go ahead and drop it down. We're gonna show you the difference in ride heights between just lowering it down without settling the suspension and then just pushing down on it to try and make it settle, which doesn't work. And then wiggling the steering wheel back and forth, which eh. But if you don't have these plates right here, the best way to do it is to roll the car back, you know, like say six feet, and then roll it back forward six feet where the car was at. And that will usually have enough time to settle the suspension to where it's going to be. So you got it set down? All right. All right, so with the car just set down, we've got a ride height of 25 and 5 eighths. Now, we're gonna do this. Okay. Now watch, it's just gonna prove me wrong right here. Okay, we've got 24 and 3 eighths. Now, is that our true settled ride height? Let's find out. Let's go ahead. We'll wiggle the steering wheel a little bit, try and help settle the suspension. Check it one more time. See, just wiggling the steering wheel dropped it down to 24 inches. So we just dropped another 3 eighths of an inch by wiggling the steering wheel. All right, now Derek and I are going to push this thing back because this is probably like a 4,000 pound car now. Okay, let's go forward. All right. All right, we went back, we went forward. Now let's see what we got. So you know what's funny is it went back up an eighth of an inch. So the suspense, so it, what's probably happened is the car is towed in a little bit, right? Because I haven't set the tow, I haven't done nothing. With the car is towed in a little bit, what happens when you push it forward, it kind of raises the car up just a tad. So that's probably what happened there. Now, since we know, and it, it, that's well within our ride height range. That's kind of what I want. Now we're gonna jack it back up and we're gonna put those plate, the uh, the turn plates on it. Well, they have expensive turn plates. These are the, uh, you know, ghetto turn plates. We're gonna put those under the tire and see if it goes down to that ride height without really doing, without rolling it back and forward. All right, so now it's back up in the air. We got those plates under the tires. And I'm gonna kind of explain to you why you need to settle the suspension is look. See how the control arm has downward angle in it and so does the upper? Well, as the suspension compresses, the tire or the control arm is going to go up, which is going to push the tire out. And so the, the traction in the tire is going to fight that movement going out. And so it's going to actually keep the car from settling down. So watch this. When I, when I tell Derek to set the car down, you're going to see this plate get moved out just because the suspension is extending out. So, go ahead, Derek, drop her down. Let's 
see how that plate shoved over look at the control arm now see now the control arm is flat and so the expansion of the control arm leveling out push the tire out and that allows the suspension to settle so i can do my caster my camber and all that all right now that the suspension is fully relaxed there's no binding in the tire fighting the control arm let's see what the ride height is now I bet it's probably a tad lower. 23 and 5 eighths. So it's 3 eighths of an inch lower than any of the numbers we had before. Which, right height changes your caster, it changes your camber, it changes your toe. And the Mopars if, have a terrible bump steer. I'm not going to get too much into bump steer right now because it's not something you guys will be able to fix. But I can tell you, the more caster that you put into the suspension, which I love caster. You need to correct the bump steer because the more caster you put into it, the back part of that steering arm, because these cars are rear steer, is gonna go down and down and down because you're pulling the upper control arm back and back and back. And what happens with that is it changes the bump steer. So now as the suspension is going through its travel, now the toe is going up and down even worse. But uh, that's a later thing. All right, now the suspension's settled. Let's go ahead and see what our camber is. <laughs> so once you get the car on the ground and the suspension settled, you just want to kind of double check your strut rods to make sure that they're the same length side to side, or make sure the lower ball joint's in the same position. Because if it's forward or back, or if there's any chassis difference, you want to make sure that's taken care of. So I usually put the tape measure on the end of the, uh, the uh, taper for the ball joint. And then I'll just kind of roughly see where it's at on the uh, K-frame bolt right there. And I've got 18 and an eighth. I'll go check the other side to make sure it's, you know, within reason or, or the same number. And then I'll go from there. So I've got my eBay special and I've got my favorite, you know, Long Acre bubble gauge. Let's just see what the Long Acre has to say first. I've got the steering wheel centered, but you know, I don't really know what the toe is. And so I'm just kind of... The wheel looks fairly straight, so I'm just going to go with that. And see, I have one and three quarters degree of negative camber. And what I like to do to start off with... So your, your cam bolts right here. So those washers are eccentric, and so if you rotate the bolt, it actually pulls the control arm in and out. And what I do is I set them up neutral, pretty much just bolt up on both sides. So that way it's neutral. And that way, if I need to make an adjustment, I know the control arm is neutral. And so I know which way I need to go to make my adjustment. So now I got one and three quarters negative camber. I'm gonna write that down. So I have negative 1.75 is my Amber. Let me show you how you do your caster now. So we're going to turn it all the way one direction. See, right off the bat, I can already tell this doesn't have a lot of caster in it. Because if it has a lot of caster, you'll actually see the suspend, you'll see the front front clip kind of tilt side to side. And what that is, the caster is dynamically changing the weight on that tire. And it's doing that by, you, by mechanical leverage. The more you pull the, the spindle back, when you turn the wheel, say left, well now the tire is being pushed down because as you turn the wheel, the, the tire is being pushed down. So that's how you can tell when you got like caster. Like racing go-karts, shoot, those things are like 15 degrees of caster, man. You turn the steering wheel, you're actually seeing the old chassis flex. You know, we don't need that much on these things. But this guy here is cool. I had to school the Dulcich and the Freiburger on the caster camber gauge. All right, so what you want to do, when you set it on here, you want to zero this bubble out. Get it in the middle of its gauge. There you go. Right there. And we're going to zero this guy out, which just has adjustable dial here. So we're going to get that right on zero. All right, so you want to turn the steering wheel all the way to the left if you're on the left side. And if you're on the right side, you want to turn your steering wheel all the way to the right. Some guys will do it, you know, like 
maybe half a turn on the steering wheel. I just like going lock to lock because then I know the numbers more, more accurate. All right, so now we're gonna go the other direction. Look at this one-handed steering because it has those turn plates on it. All right, so now that we've zeroed all that out, get in here. We'll put this guy back on here. We gotta level this one out. And my caster is about three and a quarter, which that's funny, let me tell you why. So QA1 upper control arms are designed to add three degrees of caster into your suspension. So when you bolt one on, you've automatically got three degrees more caster. So if we took that three degrees away from what the QA1 added, we would only have a quarter degree of caster, which these cars are notorious for having pathetic caster. I mean, it's like just the, the loosey goosey steering wheel on the highway, the steering wheel slowly, you know, centers back up and there's, so yeah, that is not a lot of caster. And I actually want to see a little bit more. And since I know that I have one and three quarters degree of cam negative camber, and I want to add more caster and take away some of that camber. If I take the front bolt, actually, here, let me put this down here. Let me see this. <clears throat> so I want to take away negative camber and I want to add more caster. Well, now that I know that what my camber is and that my bolts are neutraled out, what I'm going to do is the front bolt, I'm going to loosen that, adjust the caster bolt. It's going to pull the front of the control arm out, which will also pull it back, which pulling it back will add caster, pulling it out will take away camber. And so I want this to be about half degree negative camber and probably about, I'll just, I'll just go with four degrees caster. So I'm gonna go ahead and make those adjustments and then we'll see what we got. Now, since I'm going to be pulling the control arm out, it's actually going to be fighting me on the bolt, trying to rotate that. So usually you have to jack the car up a little bit to take the weight off of the the camp, the uh, eccentric bolt. And um, you might as well check the other side because while you have the car up in the air, you can not do, you know, two birds with one stone, you can adjust both sides at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and center the steering wheel and the steering wheel might not be perfect. You know, this, I kind of have to eyeball it. Actually, yeah, it is towed in. So let me just turn that wheel out that way just a tad. See, I, I automatically knew it was towed in from before. See, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And that looks, that looks pretty good. Later, we will actually run a string down the car and we'll check the toe compared to the chassis and then we'll fine tune it on the street. Oh. So the camber on this side is two and a quarter. So we got 2.25 camber and it's also negative. Now we'll check the caster real quick. It's almost like having power steering when you have those greasable plates under the tires. All right, see I've got this neutraled out and I can automatically tell that my caster is gonna be one degree different from the other side because I'm having to center this or zero this out to zero when it was sitting on one. So I bet you this is either going to be, this is probably gonna be two and a quarter caster. All right, what is our number? No, nope, I was off a little bit. It's only two degrees, so I was off a quarter of a degree. So this side's two degrees of caster. So this one, this side's gonna be just a slight different adjustment on those upper control arm bolts. So let me go ahead and take care of that. You go ahead and turn it off. So I'm just gonna loosen up my camber bolt 
or eccentric bolt just a little bit. Just enough to where the lock washer starts to spread just slightly. So I know I need to pull this bolt out. So just by doing this right here, you'll see the control arm be pulled out. All right, let's see, a little bit more. All right, we'll try that. All right, so suspension's back on the ground and it has settled down to 23 and a half, which I wanted 24 and it'd be really kind of 24 and a half. So what's nice about the Mopars is we can just put a couple turns in the torsion bars and bring the front end up where we want. You Chevy and Ford guys, ha <laughs> ha, you can't do that. Nah. Put a couple cranks in the torsion bars. Now I'm 24 on the money. Let's see what our camber is, because it was one and three quarter. So we'll zero that guy out, and I have three quarters of a degree of camber. So we took it, we took one degree out of it. So let's see what the caster is to see what we can do to correct that last quarter. Our caster is now, ooh, it's like three and three quarters. So you know what? If I just pull that uh, front bolt out, I mean, just a tick more, this side's done. Let's go see what the other side is. So we are at three and a half degrees of caster. Now, let's see what the camber is. Um. All right, go ahead and turn the wheel to the right, Derek. Just to, until I tell you to stop. Stop. A little bit more. Stop. Okay. Now we can see what our camber is. So this side is about one degree of camber. So we had, we're, see we're going in the right direction. Now we have one degree camber and we had 3.5 caster. So same thing. I just, oh, actually, you know what? I can't pull this bolt out more. That bolt is maxed out. So this is where, see? That bolt there is maxed out on, his, on the mount I could pull it out. The rear is neutral. So, this is where we get into a situation where if I brought the rear in towards the motor, yes, it will give me more caster, but it will give me more camber, which I don't want. So this is what we're going to have to do. We are going to pull out the rear bolt just a little bit. And then we will use that adjustable lower strut rod to bring our caster where we want it. See, that's where that adjustable lower comes in handy, is to fix situations like that. All right, we've made our adjustments. Let's see where we're at now. If I just look at the camber, we are, center out my bubble there. We are on the money at half degree negative camber, which is what I want. All right, Derek, turn the wheel all the way to the left. You want a bird watching? You got two hands. All right, hold it there. All right. All right, it's gonna take, well, actually I might be able to do this one-handed. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. So yeah, we zero that guy out right there. Zero that guy. 
All right, go to the right. All the way? All the way. All right, now let's see what we got here. On the money, four degrees. So, this side here, we can call it done. The ride height is correct, the camber's correct, the caster's correct. So we can lock all the bolts down on this side, the strut rod bolts, the lower control arm bolts, the eccentric bolts, we can lock all that down because the only side left we got to work, worry about now is the right side. We're gonna go ahead and check the caster first on this side since the wheel's already turned to the right. See if I can do this with my left hand now. I'm doing it with my right hand earlier, I'm right-handed. So, let's get it. Okay, we got zero. Now this is gonna be off a little bit. I think I can tell because I'm having to adjust the caster here. Oh, actually I know it's off, yeah. We have to readjust the caster with that strut rod, forgot. All right, straighten it out. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Stop. All right, let's just see where our camber is roughly. And we've got three quarters of a degree negative camber. So we got a quarter degree we can play with on the upper control arm still. All right, go ahead and turn it to the left all the way. And we have two degrees caster. So I want to camber it. No, I want to take some camber out of it and add caster. So let's see. I've got, yeah, don't do this if it's a painted shiny car. I've got three quarters of degree camber, two degrees. Oh yeah, we lost caster because I said I had to do that bolt over there. So we can't max out that anymore. So I'm gonna bump that guy out just a tick more. Actually straighten the wheel out. Let me double check the camber. Maybe I was looking at it wrong. Let me make sure the wheel's straight because that's going to change the camera. Stop. A uh, little bit more. Stop. Listen, we'll double check it. Yeah, three quarters. Okay. So, I already know what I need to do. We're going to do a tick, uh, tick out on the rear eccentric bolt and then we're going to pull the control arm forward one turn on the strut rod and see where that puts us see now to gain caster with the lower control arm we need to pull the ball joint forward so what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy here and we're going to shorten it and if you look at the threads on this so see if i going this direction will actually lengthen it going this direction will shorten it because it's basically bringing the rod closer to the heim on both sides so we're going to go ahead and put a little bit in that guy actually i could tell it needed some anyway because it was free spinning there for a second so now it's going to have a little bit of bind in it let's go ahead and butt that right up there so i know where i'm at all right, just double checked. The right side, or the left side, I mean, four and a quarter. And then we'll go over here. Get this side. Both sides are half degrees of uh, negative camber, which is what I wanted. Oh, look at that. Just placing it on there is already at zero. I didn't even adjust it yet. All right, go ahead and turn it to the left. exactly the same four and a quarter so you know oh, your casters are perfect when you can take it from one side to the other without having to readjust your bubble but let me show you something right here too this is kind of why you want to run caster 
So, uh, let's say we're making a left-hand turn right now. You know, and we're, we're say we're autocrossing, making a left-hand turn. We were at negative half degree camber. Now we are at positive 1.5, which means the tire has tilted out, which is what you want for making a left-hand corner on the left side of the car. Now, so I just showed you that is negative, or that was positive one and a half, or well, yeah, one and a half right there. Go ahead and turn the wheel to the right dirt. So now we're gonna make a right-hand turn and look at the left side of the car. This is why caster's good. All right, so when the wheel's you know straight, it's only half degree. What is it now? It is negative one degree. So we gained half degree of negative camber, which is what you want for the turning tire, you know, making a right hand turn. And then when you turn the other direction, you gain uh, camber the other way, which is what you want. So it gets weight on the outside of the tire. So caster's most gooder. So can you imagine if this was a stock car, stock suspension, the caster, the camber would never really change. You wouldn't really have a lot of caster. You'd have a freaking loose steering wheel, like a cataract. So that's why I like it. That's why the QA1 upper control arms are most beneficial. Now, if you don't have toe plates, but you got string and jack stands or something you can tie a string to, and you got four nuts, bolts, whatever you can tie a string to, this right here is how you can get your toe like almost dead on. So what I've done here, obviously two jack stands with a string with tension on it, and I have two little strings with two nuts on it. Now, there's a rocker seam right here. I have tape measured over to where it's nine and a sixteenth on both of those strings. That means that my longitudinal string is straight with the chassis or is about as straight as Mopar did anyway. We all know they're like plus or minus eighth, quarter, half, inch. <laughs> so now we can take our tape measure and I've got the steering wheel. Let's see, where is the steering wheel at? Is the door gonna open? Oh, barely. So my steering wheel is straight. That's right, I straightened it before I started. Now we can see, what, I mean, this thing's towed in. I know it because trying to push it, the car like starts to curl under itself. So this way, I'm gonna grab this here. Okay, yeah, this side's bad. This one here, we have two and three eighths. And basically one inch. So this side is towed in an inch and three eighths compared to the steering wheel being straight. So we're gonna crank out this side a lot that side we'll just crank it out i mean just a you know, that side there we'll just crank it out just a tick i mean just barely this side here will probably take like two turns of sucking the back in so the front pushes out you can also check to see if your rear end is square so we've got two and a half It's like just a tick over two and a half. And that's, it's kind of hard to tell because the string was around. So it's, it's like not even a 16th towed in, which is normal on these cars. So this is probably towed in a 32nd, which that's perfectly fine. That's actually good. Let's go to the other side. All right, this side here, we've got two and three quarters. Oh yeah, just a tick under two and three quarters. So both sides are towed in. This side's actually like closer to a 16th. That side's there's like a 32nd. So, but that's all within normal on these cars. So the rear end on this thing, I would consider fine. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and adjust our front toe.
So I just got done adjusting it. Now I have pretty much right at it's inch and three quarter or no it's I would say it's like an inch and eleven sixteenths. And this is just to the inside of inch and three quarters. So I would say this is about a 32nd toed in, which is what I want, because a 32nd and a 32nd is a 16th of an inch. So this side here, I can lock it down. Now let's check the other side. All right, so the driver's side's towed in just under a quarter inch. So let me go ahead and suck that in. Now let's see where we're at. An inch and three quarter. Two inch. So we need to go more. <clears throat> inch and five eighths. Oh wait backwards wrong thinking brain fart wrong way into three quarter so it's towed out it was towed out a quarter inch my bad brain fart and it doesn't take a whole lot of turn on the uh, tie rod to to fix that. So now we're inch three quarter, into seven eighths, a little bit more. Okay, now it's 13 sixteenths and seven eighths. So this side is still bigger. You need to make the front side bigger. There we go. That was like a eighth of a turn. Seven eighths. Seven eighths. Seven eighths. Another eighth of a turn. Now we got ticked uh, just a tad over a seven eighths. And a tad under. I mean, we're talking like a 30. We're talking like between one side of the line and the other on seven eighths, which I'm going to call a 30 second. So a 30 second in, 30 second in, that is a 16th of an inch total. We're going to lock down the tie rods right there. Let's double check, make sure the steering wheel is still straight. Yep, the steering wheel is still straight. Now, this is where I've had some problems with alignment shops. They do that right there and kick it out the door. And if there's anything wrong, they say, oh, well, your chassis must be have some damage to it or something is bent or the other. No. With these cars, you have to do a drive. So there's minor tweaking after the, once you get all of this done, this is like 99% done. And once you, and you go for a drive, there's gonna be minor tweaking here and there, and then you lock everything down. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and lock down the tie rods right now so we can get to that drive. Ah, now just for shits and giggles, we're gonna go ahead and check the toe with my toe plate, see how close I am. Am I actually the 16th of an inch like I thought? So, Derek's got a toe plate on the other side. This is what I normally do. I normally just push on the plate with my knee and then you suck up the tape measure. I'll slide it on the back side. Derek will hook it to his plate. Got it? So I have all 70, seventy-two and seven sixteenths. It looks like. All right, let go. Now let's check the other side.
close enough. It's a, so it's an eighth of an inch towed in. I'll I'll take that. So it's a I'm only a sixteenth of an inch off from what I thought. But let's go ahead and double check the back and front again, just to make sure. Sometimes, depending on how you have the tape held on the plate, makes a difference. No. So, that is no, that's the same thing. All right, let go. So same thing. Oh. Well, actually, now it's a sixteenth. I mean, it's like a fraction. It's like. It's like the tape measure line over a 16th, so that's pretty freaking close. I'll call that winning. All right, let go, Derek. So, yeah, that's the, see those two lines you can run down the frame? Those two, two string lines? They work pretty good. And the steering wheel is straight to the toe. All right, this old girl is ready for a test drive. And it just dawned on me, this car has not ran, run, driven, done anything since 1995. It's been parked in a garage in North Dakota for a majority of its life. I've had it for like three years now, two, three years. So let's just say, actually, no, it still has not run in 29 years. So this actually is a cool first test drive for this car on an alignment video. It, it just, it just dawned on me. So Derek, what do you think we hop in? Let's go take it around the block and see if there's any minor tweakings that need done. Because just be just because the numbers are correct, sometimes there's chassis flex, there's this, there's that. Um, and it might need a little cast around one corner or the other to help it track true, track straight. So we're gonna fire this thing up and actually go for the first test drive since 1995. Ugh. And as you can tell, this car is still being worked on. There's no gauge cluster. There's no dash harness. I put vintage air in it, but you know, I'd still need a dash harness to finish everything. You know, we got a temporary ball shifter, which looked like it came off of some lot lizard's face. I mean, this thing is terrible. And this thing's been converted to five speed. So this has a TK, you know, a, a Tremec five speed in it when it used to be an automatic on the column. So the console's been added. It's got the five speed and it's a 489 stroker with the numbers original 383 block so kind of some neat things that are going on here but you got to check out my uh starting situation here so yeah so it's why this is my ignition on and here is our start First test drive since 1995, Derek. So far, nothing's fallen off. A lot of brakes work really well. Too good. This has six piston brakes on it with a brake booster and all that. Oh, the trunk lid's loose. So 
noticed on the way back, because I did one more loop, and on the way back, I noticed the steering wheel was straightened out, so. It's those things that make you go, huh. get on this side of the road. The steering wheel is dead. You know, it's straight. And we're going straight. So, I don't know. Probably need to get it up to speed to really see a difference, but this car's not registered. It's not insured. It's none of that. But, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and call it good for right now until we can actually get it up to speed and test it. Because even just doing the motions, seeing how much the car turns side to side, it's even. So I'm going to say the steering wheel is pretty freaking straight. Not bad for a, you know, piece of string, huh, Derek? No, not at all. <laughs> Put it back in its dungeon here. It's tomb. Paint power brakes. So freaking touchy. <laughs> I just like RPM. And done. Pretty successful test drive, huh, Derek? Yeah. I didn't even have to touch the toe. I thought I was going to have to or, or touch the steering wheel alignment after the fact, but after driving it around and letting everything kind of settle in its place, that steering wheel just... Now, it might be a little different if we can get it on the highway, get up to speed, but uh, for right now, I'm pretty sure this showed you guys how you can do your own alignment at home and how you can get the steering wheel, you know, dead nut straight. You don't need, a, you don't need an alignment rack you don't have to pay somebody to do that. If you just buy the tools, you can do it at home yourself and you can even set it up for racing, whatever you want to do, you know, all the time. No need to have to take it on the, you know, drive it down to an alignment shop or tow it or whatever. You guys can do it all at home. And if you want to auto cross it, you know, throw some more camber in the thing, you know, crank out that tow. You want it towed out like a 16th or an eighth of an inch for autocross or for road racing. And you definitely want to camber it in because the stock geometry on a Mopar Big Block, or not Mopar Big Block, but on a Mopar in general, kind of sucks. Yeah, they actually camber out. So I have just made a bracket that bolts in place and uses the stock suspension to fix that. But uh, I'm just kind of like now getting to like start mass producing that. I made the prototype, but uh, anyways, that's not part of this video. And I hope you guys learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, now we got to haul ass to Arizona and go pick up a car out of my uh, yard there. So we'll see you guys later. We got to hook up and book it.